Hello and welcome to the final Shamrock Sports of the 2021 to 22 year. It's been a great run and we'll have so much to recap starting right now on Shamrock Sports. Hello and welcome to the second floor of the Duncan Student Center. I'm Caroline Pineda alongside Chris Frick and Anthony Rio here. It's a senior show on NDTV's Shamrock Sports. We're very happy to be here, very happy to recap this year and our four years. A very sentimental time for all three of us as we have been with Shamrock Sports for a while. Um, but first, guys, you know, some just a general thought. How are you feeling today? Oh, my God. I'm a mess. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just so emotional, Caroline. Can you believe it? Our last show. We're so old. We're, We're elderly. Old. Oh man. Well, I have got to give a shout out to my kids at home because when the day comes, you know, 10 years, 20 years down the road, I'm going to show them this episode and I'm going to say, kids, when I went to school, I knew Chris Frick and Caroline Pineda. And they're going to be watching you guys when they're watching the Super Bowl, reporting from the sidelines. <laughs> That's you. Or in the Super Bowl. And I'm going to be like, kids, I went to school with these folks. So shout out to my kids at home. I don't know your names yet, but they're going to be, they're going to be good. They'll already know me. I'll be Anthony's kid's nanny. <laughs> <laughs> wow, okay. Not the point I thought we were going to start off here on our final Sharemark Sports of the Year, but it's always something surprising, especially when Chris is on the show and Anthony today making his Sharemark Sports on-air debut. But Anthony is our leader here at NDTV, has done an amazing job as station manager, really made this club what it is. So it'll be a fun show we have here today. We're going to do some recapping, and we're going to start with what it makes sense to talk about. Football, Shamrock Sports has been a football show in the fall and a show for everything else in the spring, but we'll start with our top three football moments from the last four years. So Chris, do you want to kick us off? I will kick us off, yeah. I mean, I think, so I'd say number three for me, um, senior day against Georgia Tech, really cool day. I hadn't been in the stands in uh, over two years, so um, that was something that was really cool to experience, a 55 nothing win, so it was all, all smiles all day. Uh, got hit by a ton of marshmallows. It was, it was a great time. Uh, number two, uh, game against Michigan. I, I, go, I go from our last game day to our first game day. Um, that first game, Michigan freshman year, college game day on the scene. Um, really cool, really cool experience. Um, and, you know, obviously a big time win you see in the highlights here right now. Um, just a, a really cool, uh, cool game to start our college career off with. Uh, an upset against Michigan uh, led to that undefeated regular season, led us to the college football playoff. Um, and then in terms of our, uh, in terms of my number one moment, I mean, I don't know. I feel like it, it's kind of obvious here. Clemson, pandemic year, you know, we needed a win in life. And we got a win on that <laughs> fateful Saturday night when Clemson came rolling into town, number one in the country, and Notre Dame with the 47-40 upset in double overtime, and obviously fans storming the field. Don't regret it at all. I don't know about you guys, but uh, what a moment, what a, what a game. Um, yeah, just an absolute, yeah, you're seeing the fans storming the field right now. I mean, we made headlines around the country. How many people can say that happened at their, uh, in their college time? So, you know. That was awesome right there. So those are those are my top three. A game to be remembered for sure. I think there'll be a little bit of overlap there between mine and Chris's. But before we get to mine, Anthony has some that I think are particularly interesting. So Anthony, take us through your three. Thank you, thank you. I have to give credit where credit is due. And my third favorite Notre Dame football moment was when the oldest university marching band, the Notre Dame marching band, played levitating at the Purdue halftime show. So we got some audio, take a listen, put yourself back in the Purdue halftime show when the Notre Dame band makes an appearance. <laughs> I want you, baby. My sugar boo. I'm levitating. <laughs> Anthony, you should have hopped in there with them. I know. That was incredible. I love that moment. <laughs> and I think that the Notre Dame marching band doesn't give it up, get enough of a shout out. I think there was definitely a hole in the Notre Dame offense and defense when we went down to the PlayStation uh, Fiesta Bowl and we were playing Oklahoma State without our band. That was definitely a, a hole. We win that game, game with our band. We do. We do. <laughs> we win it with the band. 
you heard it here probably like third, fourth, and fifth because we've already said it before. Yeah. Uh, but moving on to my second favorite Notre Dame football moment, I think this is a big moment for all of us, and we're going to be living on uh, in this moment for a while. It was when Marcus Freeman was announced as head coach for the Notre Dame football team. Uh, we got the audio here, too. Just look at how the players come together around Marcus Freeman as their new leader, as the new era of Notre Dame football. What I'm going to do now, okay, because you're a brand new head football coach. I don't know about you, but I want my team to be that hype when they're going out onto the field about their new head coach, their new leadership. Marcus Freeman is a player's coach, and this next era of Notre Dame football is going to be exciting because of that. Uh, when you're talking about Anthony, that's like almost exactly the same as the video when you became station manager. That's yeah. like that was like any ah. TV swarming <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> very similar, very similar video. We should recreate it with Anthony as station manager. Okay, oh Anthony, gosh. your number oh one God. moment. <laughs> <laughs> my number one Notre Dame football moment. I think uh, I actually wasn't a Notre Dame football fan when I came to this school, but that changed really quickly because my very first game here at Notre Dame was Notre Dame against the University of Michigan. Grew up a big Wolverine hater, so coming into Notre Dame Stadium, Watching Notre Dame put up 14 points in that first quarter against UMish and coming out with the win when it might not have been expected. Uh, I remember people running down the, the tunnels at the end of the games shouting, we want Bama. And I, I, I knew we didn't want Bama, but that was, just, that was just an experience right there. Getting that first win, first time in Notre Dame Stadium, that was incredible. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Caroline? Yeah, that would have to be an honorable mention for me, too. Definitely a moment that I thought about when I was making this list. But I ended up going with, in my number three spot for my four years, the fourth quarter of that Wisconsin game at Soldier Field was so fun. It was just, I mean, the entire game was exciting. There were so many storylines, a ranked matchup, the history of Soldier Field, just such a historic place to play a game. That was exciting in and of itself, and so many Notre Dame students were there to see it, which was fun. And then came that fourth quarter where it was one exciting thing after another. Um, just a really, really like neat game to see. And I don't know if I could think of another like quarter of football that has just been like every time you looked up, like something exciting was going on. Um, really felt like a big moment that the team clicked this year, which was very fun to get to see in person in Chicago there. Um, Definitely a fun atmosphere for sure. And the storyline of you know, Jack Cohn playing his former team. Like, you know, when you cover a team, it's like all about like the storylines. Like you root for those good stories, you know, and that Wisconsin game, the ranked matchup, Jack Cohn playing Wisconsin was so many fun storylines, and then the game truly delivered. Um, my second one, speaking of storylines, was another great one. Myron Tungabailoa Amosa on senior day, really like putting the exclamation point on the win with a 55 to make it 55 to 0 with this scoop and score, which it might have been the loudest I've heard Notre Dame Stadium. It was certainly up there with the loudest I've heard Notre Dame Stadium in my four years. Um, but definitely the loudest I think I heard it all season. Just such an exciting moment to cap off a senior day shutout for this defense. But, you know, you can see the reaction there, like, from his team so excited, from everyone in the stands so excited. And Byron Tugmelo Amosa had lost his father in August and was named a captain in such an emotional moment when he was home in Hawaii. They told him over Zoom it was a really, really heartwarming moment to see the team rally around the captain and to see him finish his season like that was very special to get to watch. Um, and then, of course, Chris already mentioned it, but my number one is the Clemson game. I don't really think that one can be beat. Probably doesn't need a ton of explanation. Um, a very, very neat game. I was actually working the game, not a student who swarmed the field, but in doing so, I had the television call in my ear, and I could hear the, the Mike Tirico line that I think was in, in the midst of, of the pandemic. There's pandemonium. And I think when people watch back that game, decades down the road and just remember like it was such a such a time marker and I think all of us will just be able to, to go back to that moment and just vividly remember where we were when that game ended in double overtime so that'd be my number one as well so with that we're going to talk more about other sports besides football but really so many fun football memories from our four years and our class only had that one home loss in four years so a pretty cool thing to be able to say for this graduating class so Chris a few minutes ago you talked to another pretty pretty cool athlete on this campus another a national champion yeah, I got the chance to interview uh, Caitlin Say, who uh, recently won the national championship in women's epee. So uh, 
we want to cut to that real quick. Take it away, Chris. Thanks, guys. I'm here with the national champion in women's EPE, Kaylin Say. Kaylin, thanks for being with us here today. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and congratulations on your national championship. We got the trophy right here, slightly bigger than the second place trophy. Um, but I, I do want to know, um, you know, what are some of the differences in your fencing abilities from last year when you fell just short of that national championship to this year when you won it all? I felt like the ma one major change was my mentality and how I use my abilities to set up my action. Because um, I definitely feel like last year I had it, but I couldn't contain everything. I was really eager to like just win it, so I was like rushing my bout, so like my final. Um, but compared to this year, I kind of like toned down, like meaning I slowed down like the pace. So I think that really contributed to my success this year. Awesome, and between last year's second place finish and this year's first place finish. You took a little jaunt out to Tokyo, Japan for the Summer Olympics. How do you think that your time in Tokyo allowed you to improve your fencing skills? I think that my time in Tokyo was definitely like an experience that I never had before because it was more like a, men a mental game rather than like challenging my physical like skills in fencing. Um, so that definitely helped me a lot with my development in my mental capabilities which also contributed to my success like this year internationally and also this year in my collegiate season. Awesome. Did you have outside of fencing, did you have a favorite part about Tokyo? I think my favorite part was uh, trading pins with different kind of countries because, um, you know, we get a set of pins and then we just trade with them and I feel like that's um, an aspect that brings people together and you get to know athletes from all around the world. That's awesome. That sounds really like a really cool experience. Uh -huh. Back to college fencing. Um, this year's college championships took place right here at Notre Dame. Yes. Do you think that home court advantage kind of helped you out in your in your championship? I think definitely. It kind of sucks because um, women's side we competed in like the middle of the week. So I know like my friends, some of my friends couldn't make it, but I know they were cheering on me during class time. But then yes, we had a home court advantage. So my friends, they all came, the ones who can come, and our, our teammates were so loud. And I really appreciate them coming and watch and cheering on us because that definitely boosts my confidence level. That's awesome. And so now that you've reached the summit of college fencing, you're a national champion, what comes next for Kaylin Say? Wow, this is a good question because I feel like because I'm young um, and I'm also I'm competing for Hong Kong for fencing, I do really have a long timeline in the fencing. But looking at career level for college, I'm looking forward to the next two years to see if I can claim the national championship title again. And for out of college, I am looking to, I'm looking to, how would I say this? Um, I feel like there's a room for me to improve. However, my long-term goal is to compete in the 2024 Olympics. That sounds amazing. And we, we look forward to seeing where your career goes from here. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for having me. Thank you for joining us here. So for, for myself and Kaylin Say, back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Chris. You're looking amazing. Uh, Caroline, you want to host again? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, you're having so much fun tossing to yourself and taking it back from yourself. That was great. Great yeah. dynamic. If you can't tell, Chris filmed that a few moments ago. Um, that, was a, that was the same day filming. Don't worry, Chris has more than one, more than one on your outfit. Do I? Um, <laughs> well, now we're going to talk about every sport outside of football because football has been such a big part of being a student at Notre Dame and being a sports journalist at Notre Dame, but there are also so many other sports on this campus that have been so fun to watch and to cover. Um, so with that being said, Anthony, would you like to start and talk about your three moments outside of football? Uh, sure, I guess, I guess. It took me so long to come up with these moments because there's just so many good ones. How do we, you choose? Uh, so, for my third favorite Notre Dame sports moment, I'm going to have to go with, you know, the, the fan experience when you're in the moment. What, what are those things that really grab you? And I think one of those things are when you're in South Dining Hall and Mike Bray steps up on a dining hall table and encourages everybody to go to the basketball game, in that moment, seeing your basketball coach standing on the table in South Dining Hall, that's pretty powerful. I don't know about you, but that's got to be my third favorite sports moment here at Notre Dame. That's a pretty cool one. Right, right. <laughs> they, they even made those like white t-shirts break down the thunder mm -hmm. with Mike Bray standing on the, standing on the South Dining Hall table. like. I don't know, a little bit of an icon, I'll say it. Uh, but my second Notre Dame sports highlight from our four years here, I don't think, uh, Chris, you gave him a little bit of a shout out there. I don't think that the fencing team gets enough press. 
they now have more national championships than the Notre Dame football team. And I don't know, they're a little bit more consistent. We have, we have uh, two national championship appearances and no wins when we've been here as a uh, Notre Dame team. Wait, was it two? Is it one? I don't know. I'm a bad fan. Sorry about it. Uh, <laughs> But the, the fencing team, they're pretty consistent. They're always giving people, you know, gold trophies and gold medals at the Olympics. Let's be real. The fencing team deserves a shout out. They got to be my, my second uh, school. Notre Dame sports highlight. Yeah, yeah. Let's be real. Let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk about fencing. Ah, but the final one. I mentioned Mike Bray at three. But that men's basketball team does not deserve the managers that they have. I'm going to say it. The men's basketball managers, super underappreciated. And in fact, if you haven't been following the Notre Dame men's basketball managers, which is the team that you should be following, they actually marched down to New Orleans and got themselves a national championship victory down in New Orleans recently. So your Notre Dame men's basketball managers are national champions. That's something your men's basketball team can't say. So I think the number one Notre Dame sports moment is the Notre Dame men's basketball managers taking home the national championship. So let's give it up for them. <laughs> Solid list you have there, Anthony. Very nice. Chris, I'm sure you have some, some excellent moments from your four years as well. Oh, yeah. There's just, like Anthony said, there's so many to choose from. For, for my number three, ironically enough, you know, the number three, um, you know, my freshman year here, before football games, I was always like thinking to myself, you know, what are the keys to this game? Luckily, our uh, former NDTV member, Ellen Geyer, before every game, she would give me the three keys to the game. You see it on the screen now. It was, it was incredible. So my number three sports moment at Notre Dame is Ellen Geyer's three keys to the game. I mean, honestly, just look at this, this quality. It is incredible. I, I don't think I would have been able to watch football my freshman year and ha understand anything Without without Ellen's three keys to the game. I mean, yeah. seriously, like I wasn't a part of NDTV freshman year because I didn't I didn't know a thing. But as soon as I, I saw Ellen's three keys, you know, it was amazing. Unfortunately, now uh, Ellen Geyer is dead, uh, along <laughs> with Austin Rooney. No, she's not. That's a terrible joke. Um, That's such a bad joke. And without any yeah, context, uh, Chris, people have no context for this joke. Yeah, no one has any context for the it. Context yeah. for that joke. Ellen does it? have a bad peanut allergy, though, so we should keep an eye on that. <laughs> Um, but I do think, yeah, so that's my number three, or three keys Chris, to the game. Chris, this, is, this um, is not your comedy show. Chris, th Chris also has a comedy show with NETV, and I think he thinks he's on that one right now. Chris, this is the sports show. I know, I'm talking about <laughs> sports. I'm talking about Ellen's three keys of the game, Caroline. This is the senior show, not this the This is the senior show, that's true. This that's is the true. last right. senior show. I don't care anymore, Caroline. You have to, like, I don't care. It doesn't matter. Look at this, this, is a, this pen, I don't use it. I don't need it. Who cares? Number two, uh, you know, basketball, men's basketball, we've been through a lot of trials and tribulations over the, I don't care. Trials and tribulations <laughs> over the years, I really don't care. Um, but, you know, after years of not having anything good happen in basketball, we faced off against the number 10 team in the country, Kentucky, earlier this year. A game that I don't think anyone was giving us a shot going into it. But... We came out on top and we got to storm the court against the number 10 team in the country after knocking them off. I mean, that was a, that was a fun game. And it was a, it was a team that really hadn't had any success in years. And it was, just, it was this cathartic moment where we finally had something good um, happen there. So I would say that's my number two moment. Um, and in terms of my number one moment, um, I'm going to go to the best athlete on Notre Dame's campus, myself. Um, a few weeks back, I was playing a game of flong. Um, you, you know, flong, flip cup pong. Um, who was, what, what drinks were involved? I don't know. Who cares? This is my. I don't care, Caroline. I, like, water. I, I'm sure. Water. It was water. I don't care. It was water. Yeah, sure. Um, last show. Who cares? Um, and you know, I, we were down to one cup, one on one. And you know, I said I, I did what any good uh, good athlete would do. I said game, shot it, made it. Uh, my team flipped it for the win. That was the best moment. In my I don't care. Like I don't care, you guys. I said <laughs> no, it doesn't athletics. matter. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. So that athletics. was my number one moment. That was Chris's number one moment in that all was the, four years. That was of the Notre greatest Dame sports athletics. moment at Notre Dame between the I years mean, 2018 and 2022. To be fair, I mean, it, you are describing an athletic feat that yeah. happened in the vicinity of Notre Dame. So yeah. that's fair. That does technically. Ellen the Geyer is alive, by the way. <laughs> Ellen is alive, and so is Rooney. Yeah. And without the context of that, it's probably a little bit confusing. But don't worry, Chris. It's an inside joke with Chris here. Um, well, that takes us to mine, which I feel like is pretty anticlimactic after 
those two, but yeah. wow. Um, my, two. Okay. my number three <laughs> moment um, was when Arike Gumbawale became the Notre Dame women's basketball all-time leading scorer in program history. A very neat moment for me um, because in a fun little twist, I actually got to be the one who interviewed her about it post-game. It was one of the coolest moments from my four years at Notre Dame. Um, just really neat to be able to ask her about that moment after the game. And obviously, she's gone on to do great things beyond that, both before and after that. Just an incredible career at Notre Dame, incredible career in professional basketball now. Um, but Arike, definitely a very, very fun figure to watch in our four years here. Uh, my second moment is also women's basketball. I have a little bit of a theme here, you might see. My second moment is when women's basketball was in the Final Four our freshman year. We, sadly, as the class of 2022, missed the women's basketball championship, which was in 2018 when we were still seniors in high school. But we were here for the 2019 Final Four, which eventually resulted in a loss to Baylor in the championship game. But regardless, this UConn game was so exciting. It had everything and obviously resulted in a win over UConn in the Final Four to take Notre Dame back to the national championship game. So while it did not result in a national championship victory, this moment still makes my top three from my four years at Notre Dame. Always feels good to beat Gino. Always is, always is fun for Notre Dame to beat Gino. Yes, that is true. It's also you fun can say when Notre Dame wins national championships. Just saying. Fencing, okay, I know Anthony managers. is really, really passionate Long. about the fencing campaign here. <laughs> okay, that Chris, we're not counting that as a national championship. Um, number one, check my, out the form. <laughs> I don't care. Like Carol, I don't care. You got to understand. It's pretty impressive. I do understand. You're making it pretty clear. If I didn't understand before, I definitely understand now. But <laughs> one thing that I cared very much about, on the flip side of that, is when I got to interview Muffet McGraw for her Ring of Honor induction. Again, I'm going a little bit selfish on this because Muffet McGraw was one of the people that I looked up to growing up. One of the reasons I wanted to come to Notre Dame in the first place was watching her and that women's basketball team when I was younger. And then she was inducted into the Ring of Honor this year, and I got to sit down with her and ask her about it beforehand. So we'll go down as one of my favorite moments in my four years at Notre Dame and just really one of my favorite moments from my life, honestly, getting to interview Muffet McGraw before such a momentous occasion for her. Um, so I stuck with a bit of a women's basketball theme there, but they were one of my favorite teams to cover and they gave us so many exciting moments in the four years and I can't wait to see what they do in the next few years of the Ivy era. era. The Neil Ivy era is just getting started and I'm so excited to see what happens. But Anthony, I know before we segue here again, I know you wanted to get back to football a little bit. Speaking of exciting futures of programs and newer head coaches and everything, I know you have something to say about the upcoming future of football. Yeah, yeah. So I mentioned Marcus Freeman getting named as head coach as one of my biggest football moments here, but I, I don't want to deceive you. I think there will be some growing pains, but I'm really excited about this because Marcus Freeman reminds me a lot about another famous football coach that's near and dear to my heart. He has experience at Wichita State as well as AFC Richmond. Marcus Freeman reminds me of Ted Lasso a bit. Uh, check, out, check out this video. You see that? That might look like Ted Lasso, but you could just as easily see Marcus Freeman in on that post-game dance. And this is a player's coach. This is somebody who knows how to connect with his players. And they might still go through struggles, though. Don't get me wrong. They're coming in to a new era. They have real talent on the team. But I think it might be a struggle that first year. But that is nothing to be sad about. Because in season two with Ted Lasso, I won't spoil it for you, there's a big comeback. There is a big comeback in season two of Ted Lasso. And I think season two of Ted Lasso is Marcus Freeman making the national championship in his second year at Notre Dame football. Wow, bold prediction. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that one comes true. This could be another thing that you show people for years to come, Anthony, if that actually does come true. So mm -hmm. definitely keep this tape no matter what happens. Um, with that, we're going to segue to another thing Anthony already talked about, which is the men's basketball managers winning. What's very fun for us is that our future station manager here at NDTV was actually on that team. He's a men's basketball manager, and he is going to tell us all about that trip to New Orleans that brought home a national championship for the managers. Thanks, Caroline. As March has come to an end, college basketball fans across the country saw the Kansas Jayhawks crowned as national champions following an exhilarating tournament. However, there was another national championship going on this past weekend in New Orleans, the Manager Games. For those of you who have not heard of this marquee event, its participating rosters are made up of the student managers for their university's men's basketball teams. These manager squads have been playing each other all season, but with the field cut down to just eight heading into New Orleans, the stakes were high as ever. Our very own Notre Dame men's basketball managers garnered enough Twitter votes to make it to the West Regional Final, and with the help of many generous donations, left South Bend for the Big Easy. In the Elite Eight, the Irish were matched up with the managers from Michigan State. 
Following a 14-hour drive just a day prior, Notre Dame struggled out of the gate, facing an eight-point deficit at halftime. But behind a barrage of second-half three-pointers, the Irish were able to take down the Spartans with a final score of 46-33. to Waiting for them in the semifinals were the managers of the Illinois Fighting Illini. The Irish took an early lead behind a few fast-break conversions, but the scoring came to a screeching halt as Illinois clawed back to tie the game up and send it to overtime. It was squared up again at the end of OT, forcing a sudden death double overtime. First basket wins and advances to the championship. After getting two huge stops, Notre Dame's Will Hibbs drew a foul to set up his game-winning free throw. 24-23, the Irish move on. The Manager Games Championship pitted Notre Dame against the managers out of the University of Wisconsin. The Irish kept taking it right at the Badgers, who had no answer for Notre Dame's Sean Walsh. He led a well-balanced offensive attack for the Irish, who led by five heading into the half. Notre Dame kept its foot on the gas after the intermission, beating the Badgers 38-30 to claim the title of 2022 Manager Games National Champions. Congratulations, Notre Dame managers, and lights light up Grace Hall. Back to you guys at the studio. Welcome back to the second floor of the Duncan Student Center. This is such a nostalgic moment for us, the culmination of four years of working on Sharemark Sports. And when we got here, when Anthony and I started our freshman year, it was a very small production run by some pretty great people, John Horlander, Johnny Soper, um, so many other people in the mix there. But really, it was just it started with a small group, and then Ellen Geyer, who we mentioned earlier, joined when I did, and Anthony joined when I did, and then Chris came on a little later. But you know, we've really put together a fun crew, and this show has been so fun to do for the last four years. So it's a very, very nostalgic moment for us sitting here today at this desk. Well, at least, for, at least for me. I guess I shouldn't speak for them, but nostalgic moment for me, for sure. I would say it's one for me as well. Okay, thanks, Chris. I would say I'm already feeling nostalgic, even though this is my first, first time on a Shamrock <laughs> Sports episode. Uh, I'm already thinking back to the, the three moments that we all listed. The three keys. Man. Yeah. 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 Anthony Shamrock Sports wouldn't be here, wouldn't be what it is today without your leadership, though. So, on air debut for sure, but you would never know it, first of all, because of the poise on air. He's done other on air stuff with NDTV, but not Shamrock Sports itself. Um, but, Anthony, so many amazing contributions to the show throughout the four years and to every show on NDTV. So, with that, I'm going to let Anthony take it away with a little bit of a game that I know he wanted to play, a little bit of a fun way. The show has been fun for four years, but. As Chris said, this is our final show, and we're all three seniors, so Anthony wanted to play a little bit of a game, and take it away. Yeah, yeah. I think that um, we sometimes underestimate what counts as a sport, so I brought this little game with me <laughs> that I think we can play. Uh, one person who I've talked to in the past, former teacher of mine, would say, you know, a sport's really just got to have, you know, a scoring system. Some people, you know... Masters are going on this week. Some people wouldn't consider golf a sport. Whoa. I'd say, man, there's a scoring system. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I feel like the scoring system is the only thing that makes golf a sport, but that's just me. But continue. Yeah, I prob <laughs> I'm probably misquoting him, but good thing I'm not the journalist here, so uh, we, can leave, we can leave the facts to the journalists. But I wanted to play a little game of Would You Rather, and while we play the game, I'm going to be tallying their answers so we know who's the winner at the end. How does one win... Would you rather? Uh, you pick the right answers. Oh, uh, okay. There's a correct are, answer? Are you the judge, jury, and executioner? Yes. Okay. <laughs> well. That's how this goes. This will go well for uh. us. <laughs> but also, the, the, the rule is the cards don't lie. So um, you, you each get the same question, and you each get to pick an answer, and then, uh, then I pick the winner. So uh, we'll, we'll start with one question. The question is, uh, would you rather... If you had a gun with one bullet, shoot Anthony or Chris. Chris. Wait, what? I thought this, I thought this was a joke. Lie. What, is, what is going on here? That's you what guys, it says. You guys, it just say met, that. you guys just met before the show and decided you were going to do everything you could to catch me off guard, didn't you? I, I, have, I have not. I have no test? part in this. Is this do a you test? want to pass on this? Is this like a bigger TV show where Did it's like pranking me? you just ask me if I would rather kill myself <laughs> or you? What is going on here? The cards don't lie. He cares lie. less than me. <laughs> the cards don't lie. That's not where I thought this was going. I don't, I'm so confused. I'm I very think, confused. I think this is part of a larger conspiracy within NDTV to throw off the last Sharemark Sports episode and see, see what curveballs we can throw, what, whatever we haven't gotten in our four years. Yeah. All I'm saying, you can pass if you want. We can go to question two. Do you want to yeah, hear question pass. two? Yeah, let's pass. Let's okay. pass. Uh, I don't know. Do we want to hear question two? I don't know I'm not do. sure if we do now. <laughs> I okay. guess. Okay, question two. 
This one's more sports related. You see there's categories. There is personal drama, and then there's real sports, and then there's more. Let's go to real sports. I'm scared. Would you rather Marcus Freeman make the college football playoff in his first year here, or Brian Kelly get fired in his first year at LSU? I think it would be really cool for Marcus Freeman and Notre Dame to make the national championship. Yeah, I would Freeman's say that first too. Year. I'm not a spiteful human. Yeah. Brian right, Kelly right. can do what he will. Ah, oh, good, good. That was a test question. I just wanted to see if we were full of envy or if we were full of praise here at, at uh, Shamrock Sports. So, no, uh, I think we're, we're all about positivity here. On, well, sometimes. Positivity and constructive crazy. criticism. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Crazy, crazy that that's not a would you rather. Yeah. If you really think about it, that's pretty wild that they would make a – that must be a really new game of would you rather because it must have come out after the first week in December I mean, the cards don't lie. Cards no, they lie. don't lie. Did you see I got they my don't pen lie. back, by the way? I that's did crazy. see you got your well, pen back. That's it's because it's, it's CGI. That, that, it's, it's crazy how technology has advanced. Well, sports, CGI, comedy. We have so many, throw it? <laughs> so many different elements here. <laughs> oh, oh, it hit the ceiling. Oh, look, you just made more shots than the Notre Dame's men basketball team. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we are that. just off the rails. Okay, I guess this is a comedy show. It's, in its final edition of the year, Sharebox Sports is doing its best to become a comedy show, apparently. <laughs> what are you looking at me? I'm trying to, I'm trying to talk about to sports our, here. Thank you to our two resident comedians for that. But Anthony's that, over here giving me a hypothetical gun. <laughs> okay. I, I, just want, I just want to talk about sports, man. <laughs> well, we will talk about sports. We'll finish by talking about Shamrock Sports in particular. We'll talk about our favorite oh God, moments favorite sport. from our four years here at Shamrock Sports. Chris, do you want to start us off with your favorite Shamrock Sports moment from the last four years? Oh, my God. I feel like it's, like, right now, you know? Like, I think, I think this episode is, like, my favorite. As much as I say I don't care, you know, I, I do care. I care a little bit. You know, Just getting, a little bit. Getting to be with you guys, getting to, to have this culmination of all, all our work and getting to kind of celebrate in the, in the glory of all this, of, of what we've built up. Um, there's something special about that, and I, I've enjoyed every moment of it with you guys. Yeah, Anthony, how about you? Are you the type of guy to like, like read other people's tests? Because that's what I was gonna say oh. in this episode. You didn't but write you know what that means? That means we, we have a Shamrock Sports bingo here, folks. I just checked off the last X in my, in my bingo card here, so. <laughs> Uh, I think that my favorite Shamrock Sports moment is getting a Shamrock Sports bingo on my debut. Did I miss finale. the production meeting? I think I just <laughs> missed the production meeting entirely. None of this, I knew none of this was happening. I feel like they just were like, let's meet without Caroline and let's talk about all of this. Caroline, and then we'll you, surprise you, her with all you of you it. You would be what astonished at how little preparation <laughs> went into this. <laughs> what is Shamrock Sports bingo? I don't know. I don't know. Look, look we have like, I mean, I see Caroline that. shoots a mad glance at Chris. We have Chris says he doesn't care a hundred times. Chris throws his pen. Twice, bonus points if he throws it a third. Do you want this? Save it for later. Okay. Oh, and wow. then we have Chris stealing my notes. What a fun I... game of bingo. <laughs> to be clear, I wasn't. I didn't give Chris an angry glance. It was probably a confused glance. Mm, it's mm. fair. Chris often confuses me on Shamrock Sports, but that's Mommy. okay. That's okay. It's been it's been a fun four years here at Shamrock Sports, and my favorite moment from the four years was when a certain highlighter rolled off the desk and fell off the desk. <laughs> here you see Ellen Geyer. We would like now to invite Ellen Geyer to come over and stand on the set <laughs> for our final show, as well as anyone back in the control room who's contributed to Shamrock Sports and is able to step away from the controls for a minute. Come here, yeah. Ellen. Yes, we're serious. Come on, back. This part I knew. This is the one part of the show that I was. This is. Ellen's on mic, This yeah, is the one part of the show that I actually did know was happening ahead of time. Everything else they planned without telling me. I didn't bring my highlight. Yeah, Ellen. So Here, you can, you can roll the pen. Actually, I don't know if it'll roll. I don't think yeah, we, we got roll our that. crew coming on set Ellen now. can roll it off, oh, roll it off the desk. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's so cool. Chris, that's uh, my favorite pen. It threw really oh well. There is everyone. Uh, what a great crew at Shamrock Sports. Ducks, so your faces are in it. Very nice, very nice. This is, this is our crew. So many amazing members of our crew. And while the seniors here are graduating and moving on to become graduates like Ellen here, we know that the show will be in great hands with the crew, the younger crew who's standing here behind us, and we can't wait to come back as alums and see all the amazing things they do. So for the last time, for Chris Frick and Anthony Rio, I am Caroline Pineda. This has been Shamrock Sports.